So, Raymond Connell, what, what is your definition of critical thinking? Critical thinking I'd always see as thinking that starts with a given reality, with a certain experience of reality, a concrete situation that you're in, and tries to go beyond it. Um, but to go beyond it in a way that thinks about a world that did exist before, that is how the current situations come into existence and where it might develop, where it might be next. So it's always critical thinking to me is always about the making and transformation of reality and the way we understand that, the way that's reflected in thought and the way thought itself contributes to a, a process of change. Okay. Do you, do you uh, see, do you see the, the university as still being very relevant today? Relevant in all sorts of ways. Uh, not all of them good. I mean, the university is involved in processes of cultural change that I strongly disagree with. Um, so, you know, we live in a, a neoliberal world and work in a neoliberal university, which is um, marketising education, which I regard as a form of corruption of, of public education. Um, the university is actively involved in that kind of process. But the university is also an important site of critical thought, of thought that goes beyond this you know, market-based reality. It's always been that way in Australia, uh, perhaps more than most other countries. Uh, universities have been a key site for uh, critical thinking, for reflection, for debate. Uh, we depend uh, to a great extent in Australia on universities as a site for, you know, our, for, uh, as a cultural growth point, really. Um, so I think universities, although, you know, some terrible things are happening in them, uh, are still immensely important site to work in. Mm, thank you. With your, um, what, what, what led you to actually to, to write your book, the latest book, Southern Theory? What actually motivated you to write that? Well, I wrote Southern Theory because I really care about social science. Um, I think social science is a, a crucially important part of our society's capacity to reflect on itself, uh, to deliberate, uh, to come up with paths into the future. But the social science we have is still very limited. And it's limited very largely because it's dominated by the university world of Western Europe and North America. That is, the global north, the richest area of the world, but an area where really less than one... But an area where less than one-fifth of the world's people live. Um, so in Australia, um, we're very much oriented to the global north in our politics, in our media, but also in our intellectual life. Um, so that we teach our students to read, you know, Foucault, Raymond Williams, Judith Butler, um, Irigare, the you know leading intellectuals of Europe and North America, and rightly so. But we don't teach them in the same way. Uh, to read Ashish Nandi or Pauline Hontonji from Africa or Nestor Garcia Canclini from Latin America. Um, that is, we don't introduce our students to the wealth of ideas and knowledge and social experience from the majority of the world's population, from the most of the world's cultures. Um, so Southern Theory is essentially a critique of contemporary social science because it's so much focused on and therefore bounded by the experience of the global north, of the old imperial powers, the you know, contemporary economic centre of global capitalism. But that is a limited experience. I mean, it is not the experience of people in Australia. Uh, it's not the experience of people in China, India, Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, the Arab world. These are different social histories, different social experiences. And our social science should be inclusive of those experiences. And the way towards them 
is to read, study and learn from the intellectuals from those parts of the world who have theorised, interpreted and researched those social experiences. So the book is um, a contribution um, to democratising social science, but democratising social science on a world scale, not just a local one. How has it been received? Mixed, um, I have to say. Um, <clears throat> I regret that it's had no media exposure in Australia at all, and I think that's very sad. Um, it's got reviews, I think there are 10 reviews so far in scholarly journals, and there will doubtless be more. And those reviews are mostly very favourable, um, but uh, it's, you know, it's not a, a, a tidal wave of enthusiasm for this. The people who do come in contact with it, I think, largely ha have a kind of aha reaction. You know, they, they recognise the point. And when I've talked about this kind of issue in, say, in Southern Africa or Latin America, yeah, everybody gets it. Mm. When I talk about this kind of thing in North America or Europe, it's much more of a struggle because it's going against the grain of, you know, the conventions of university life, the disciplinary habits, uh, the, the skills and knowledges that people in those parts of the world currently have. So it's a bigger ask. Mm. Um, and it's, so the response is positive but slow. And that's something I've learned to to appreciate and to understand some of the reasons for. And uh, basically, you keep pushing. And of course, I'm not the only person doing this. Mm. Um, uh, people like Vina Lal, who's also speaking at this conference. Uh, people um, like uh, Farid Alatas, who's speaking this week at the Australian Sociological Association conference. He comes from Singapore and has been talking about Asian perspectives in social science. People like Pauline Huntonji, who's been grappling for a long time with the issue of African perspectives in philosophy. Um, so there are people doing this in different parts of the world and I think this is beginning to come together and that's very exciting actually right now. This is beginning to work together. That's good. Um, uh, um, just generally, in terms of your life as a, as a scholar and an academic, what inspires you? Um, <clears throat> well, I've done a lot of work about education, um, research, some practical work with, with teachers. And what inspires me most of all is students learning. Um, there's an enormous pleasure in teaching uh, in witnessing students taking fire with new ideas and new material, in learning to be producers of knowledge or cultural material themselves. And I think of, you know, most of my writing, in fact, as a kind of educational intervention, including Southern theory. Um, so I get excited when I see people's eyes light up and say, yes, you know, they get it and they can take it somewhere. Um, so. Um, you know, acknowledging all the constraints of being in a neoliberal university, all the constraints of being a, a speaker of English in a multilingual world, um, all the constraints of the commercial pressures in our culture. Uh, I'm still an optimist. I think cultural change does happen and you know, de intellectual and cultural democracy uh, can be produced and it's constantly a matter of struggle, um, you, constant debate, uh, improvement, but that's how science grows. I mean, that's how knowledge grows, um, by investigation, criticism, evaluation, new innovation, further debate, contestation and so forth. It's a constant and somewhat turbulent process, and you don't know what the outcome will be, but being in the midst of it is endlessly fascinating. <laughs> Thank you very much.